Hey guys, today I want to show you another useful tool in our shop, the Holzmann BS115 metal bandsaw. So we bought this unit because you can use it both as a cutoff saw and also a standing band saw with a table to cut out shapes, mostly knife blanks out of steel. Since this unit is the cheapest you can get and also runs on to 30 watt, we chose it. It has a 550 watts of power, which doesn't sound like a lot, but since the blade speed is very low, that's not really an issue. It, I, the adjustment is a bit weird, uh, it says on the saw itself that you can adjust it between 20, 29 and 50 meters per minute, but when you look at the actual belt housing uh, it says something different, I think I'm gonna put in a b-roll shot of that, so, but I don't know, but it's just off by a few meters so it doesn't matter that much. The belt size is 1638 by 12.5 by 06 millimeters uh, but with the thickness you can actually vary a bit so you can get some that are 0 0.5 or 0 0.7 or that are as you can see on the saw 13 mil long or 12 and a half or 12 doesn't matter that much. The maximum rated workpiece size is 110 millimeter round stock 110 by 114 rectangular however that's a bit optimistic that's gonna take quite a long time so if you work with these sizes you should probably think about getting a bit of a larger machine when you get your bandsaw you first have to assemble it it took us about an hour and it's a bit difficult if you're alone because the frame is very flimsy unless it's completely assembled so if you can get a buddy to help you, that would be that would be great. To get at the screw for the belt assembly is also quite painful, but that's usually uh, only a problem if you're first assembling it. After the belt tension is set up correctly, then it's not an issue anymore. Now we get to the issues. Uh, the largest one, as you can probably see by the cable ties, is the tensioning mechanism. This controls the force that gets applied to the saw when it's in the cutoff position. This thing came completely bent. This screw right here, as you can see, if I turn it, it's just wobbling about. So this never really worked for us and we couldn't get proper tension on the saw, which means it wouldn't cut properly. So we had to find a way around it. We couldn't find a threaded rod uh, in this shape that was longer. If you can get that, then just screw it in and it's fine. But uh, we couldn't, so we chose the cable tie method, which kind of also works. It's a bit hard to dial in the correct tension, but once you have it set up, then you don't have to touch it anymore. The built-in vise is also a bit meh. It has a huge amount of backlash and you can't grab smaller pieces, so it's not possible to cut off small strips, for example. Because this is the screw that, if I turn this back, you can see the backlash, and this kind of wobbles about. So you can only fix it by tightening this screw, but this screw also uh, changes the amount of pressure that's on this guide screw. So if you actually tighten this so that this can't swivel, you can't move the uh, vice either. So it's, yeah, you can't really help that. And also, with as with pretty much all bandsaws, it's not possible to get straight cuts on the cutoff saw. So if you needed to, let's say, cut or weld pipes, 
then you might want to look in getting a circular metal saw. When you cut knife steel, there are also some things to look out for. If you get laser cut knife steel, like on this one here, if it would focus, you can see on the edges it's a bit shiny. Then the laser cut part is glass hard, so you can't cut it with a bandsaw. We get around this by marking wherever we want to cut and then grind the part off on the belt grinder. Then if you just grind out the outer 0.5 mil, then it's fine and you can cut it. Otherwise it will destroy your blade. Uh, also, if you cut Damascus pieces or forged pieces, it's a good idea to grind off the forging scale before cutting it as that's very hard and can damage your blade over time. But even though it has its issues, uh, this unit is such an improvement to an angle grinder. No noise, no grinding dust everywhere, no need for PPE unless maybe glasses. You don't burn your pieces and you can easily cut out more or less precise shapes out of your steel stock. That just isn't possible with an abrasive disc, at least not without losing a lot of material. Since we work with Damascus quite a lot, we like to keep uh, as much as possible of the leftovers because you can use it to make guards or just to make decorative pieces on knives. So we want to keep as much as we can. It's sadly also a bit tall, so it's right around one meter, a bit less. So you can't really fit it under a normal workbench. So you have to make some space somewhere else in your shop for it to put it away. At least as long as you want to keep the original stand, you can take the stand off. The machine is completely independent from it. So you could mount this to maybe a lower stand that you build yourself out of wood and then you can actually store it properly. That was it for this video. I hope you could get a good overview about this saw. Again, even though it has its problems, I think it's a great addition for a knife making shop just for the ability to cut it shapes and its use as an automatic cut-off saw. Yes, it takes longer than cutting it with an angle grinder, but also you don't have to do anything while it's cutting, so you can work on something else in between and let the machine do the job. Thanks for watching my video and bye-bye.